This meeting of the Stark Board of Aldermen will now come to order. Please rise for the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance, after which Alderman Maynard would like to open us in a word of prayer, and we will observe a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, just asking for your guidance and direction as we move forward with the business of this city, Lord. Yes, Lord. Please be with each and every one of us and guide and direct us to your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you have before you a copy of the written agenda. I have two proposed changes that I would ask for a revision on the agenda. The first relates to uh, the matter that's on the consent agenda uh, with uh, that approves the Mayor's Youth Council uh, going to the Youth Summit in Clinton uh, for a cost not to exceed $1,800. Uh, they have more attendees than they expected to have, uh, so they have asked for a maximum of $2,050. I would ask that that matter remain on the consent agenda and the maximum amount be changed from $1,800 to $2,050. Uh, is there anyone? Uh, Same move. All right. Proposed uh, revision has been made by Alderman Carver. Mr. Mayor, I have one other revision to Hold that. Hold on, wait, wait. <coughs> I've, I've got to go one time. I've got one more after that. Oh, to that? To, to that. that uh, okay. Before we get too far down on the tracks. All right. Um, since that's going to be on consent and a finding is required under statute, we need to cite the statutory provision. So at the very end of subsection B, just put pursuant to Mississippi Code 17.13.1, because the trip will advertise and bring into favorable notice the opportunities, possibilities, and resources of the city. I got that language. All right, so the proposed revision from Alderman Carver in item 9B is to change the not to exceed amount uh, to $2,050 and to add to the end of the item pursuant to Mississippi Code annotated uh, section 17-3-1, the trip will advertise and bring into possible notice the opportunities, possibilities, and resources of the city. And that item is to be so revised and remain on the consent agenda. Alderman uh, Carver, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, please note the change. Yeah. Well, the house can, no matter how I got a question on that, you said the number of attendees, does that need to be changed as well? Or does it matter? I'm a chaperone number. Uh, <coughs> Shantea, is the, is the maximum number of attendees changed from 12? From 12 to 16. Okay. Or to 17, and there are four chaperones. All right, yes, yeah, so we do need to change those. Uh, Alderman Carver, is it your proposed revision uh, to revise the item as stated? Uh, also, uh, changing the number of approved uh, attendees to 12 and the number of adult chaperones to four. Yes, so that's all right. Change to 17. Oh, the number, the, excuse me, the number of approved attendees to 17 and the number of chaperones to four. Alderman Carver, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? Please note the change. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Since we're on that section, the same language needs to be applied to Mayor's Business Item A at the very end, pursuant to Mississippi Code Annotated 1731 because the advertisement will bring into favorable notice the opportunities, possibilities, and resources of the city. Alderman Carver, would you like to make that proposed revision? Yes, sir. All right, proposed revision from Alderman Carver <clears throat> is to add to the end of item 9A, uh, which is also on the consent agenda, uh, the consideration of purchasing a half-page advertisement and the, in an ad campaign booklet for the NAACP's 46th Annual Freedom of Award Banquet in the amount of $60. Add to that, pursuant to Mississippi Code, annotated uh, section 17-3-1, because the advertisement will bring in <coughs> favorable notice the opportunities, possibilities, and resources of the city. Alderman Carver, is that your proposed revision? Yes. Sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. 
please note the change. And the final recommendation I have is uh, <coughs> we, we've had a another commercial truck go down in sanitation, uh, and that leaves us with one truck. I've got a request for an emergency rental uh, from the Director of Sanitation and Environmental Services. Uh, so I would uh, request uh, revising the agenda to add an item that is a request for authorization of the mayor on behalf of the city to sign an emergency rental agreement with Big Truck Rental uh, to the agenda. Same move. All right, proposed revision from Alderman Carver is to add to the agenda an item two under uh, Roman numeral 11 L, a request to authorize the mayor on behalf of the city to sign an emergency rental agreement with Big Truck Rental. That item will be added to the agenda and it will not be placed on the consent agenda. Alderman Carver, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? What's the length on that? Do we know? One month. One month. Okay. Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter's been placed on the regular agenda. Can I just ask a question? The one that went down, what year was it? 2013, our newest truck. What was the, I mean, that's pretty new. Was there a reason or is it? Uh, problems with the compactor. Thank you. Yeah. And we'll have a fuller discussion when we get to the item. We, okay. we do need to discuss that item prior to approving it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you may. Uh, there is, we have uh, related to board business, it's 10D appointment to uh, various boards and commissions in the city of Starkville. Uh, we have received a full list as of today uh, for the uh, for the new uh, park and recreation uh, advisory board. Uh, we did not have that at the time the packet was released. With with no, if there's no objection, I'd like to re read the list. Is yes, that, on, that matter is on consent. Yes, that matter is on consent. And it will remain on consent unless it's pulled off for information purposes. <coughs> uh, the chief administrative officer will read uh, the names of the appointees uh, to the uh, 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 task force that will evaluate the parks. For, from Ward 1, we have Matthew Rye. From Ward 2, Jerry Jefferson. From Ward 3, Andrew Martin. From Ward 4, Sumner Davis. From Ward 5, Eric Halberg. From Ward 6, Dorothy Isaacs. From Ward 7, Betty Robertson. All right. At this time, are there any proposed revisions to the agenda from the members of the board? I'd just like to comment on that. Uh, hearing that list of names, a couple of them I hadn't heard as of Friday at the deadline, but I, I applaud each and every one of y'all for finding individuals that have a vested interest in the park. I mean, I know a lot of those people with either commissioner, directors, children that are playing now, but I mean, again, I applaud y'all. I, I like the way we did it instead of doing solely by, you know, your demographic of where you live or geographic down to another reason and I think all those individuals are highly qualified so thank y'all. Any further proposed revisions to the agenda? Alderman Wynn. Okay. Item number 10G, place on consent. All right. Proposed revision from Alderman Wynn is to place item 10G, the discussion and consideration of approving the travel for Mayor Wiseman, mm -hmm. CAO Adams, and all, all aldermen except Vice Mayor Perkins to attend the 2015 annual MML conference in Biloxi, Mississippi, June 22nd through 24th, 2015, with advanced travel not to exceed $1,600 per attendee as presented on the consent agenda. Alderman Wynn, is that your proposed revision? Uh, yes, it is. Ma Mr. Mayor, actually, the, as it relates to the agenda and the EPAC, the city engineer is also on that list. All right, Alderman Wynn, uh, would you like to uh, uh, include the city engineer on I the list? All right, so uh, for clarification purposes, uh, that uh, matter includes the city engineer. It would be uh, a, approval of the mayor of Mayor Wiseman, <coughs> CAO Adams, uh, city engineer Edward Kemp, and all uh, aldermen <coughs> except for Vice Mayor Perkins, otherwise as previously stated. Alderman Wynn, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none. That matter's been added to the consent agenda. Alderman Wendy, you have further proposed I revision? I do. Item 10F. Um, also add Alderman Maynard to that, the Alderman that will be serving with the GTR link. Yourself and Mr. Terry Kemp, place on consent. 
Proposed revision from Alderman Wynn is to place item 10F, the appointment of Mayor Wiseman, to, uh, Terry Kemp, and Alderman Maynard to serve on the GTR Link Advisory Committee on the Consent Agenda. Alderman Wynn, <coughs> is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none, that matter's been placed on the Consent Agenda. Alderman Wynn, do you have further proposed I do. revision? Item 10A. Remove the period and add. Present to the board during the recess meeting. So at the end of that, that should say 2015 presentation to the board during the recess March meeting. All right, so Alderman Wynn, that would add to the matter as stated. Uh, uh, let's see, let, let me read it uh, for clarification. Uh, the matter would be uh, a consideration of, a direct, uh, of directing C the CAO to work with the city clerk and personnel director to develop an RFP for the consolidation of all of the city's pre-tax benefits and <coughs> period plan administration and to advertise the completed uh, specification, the RFP shall be completed by uh, Tuesday, March 17th, uh, 2015, and presented mm -hmm. to the board during the recess March meeting. Yes. All right, uh, and I, I just have one question for clarification. Uh, does that mean it would be subject to approval uh, by the board at the March 17th meeting? Yes, it would. All right. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Seeing none, that matter uh, has been revised and will remain on the consent agenda. Alderman Wynn, do you have further proposed revisions? Yes, remove item 10E from consent. All right, item 10E has been removed uh, from consent. That is the consideration of the consolidation of the Starkville Electric Department and uh, Starkville Public Services. Alderman Wynn, do you have further proposed revisions? That is it for me. All right. Are there any further proposed revisions from the members of the board? Alderman Maynard. <coughs> Under K Public Services. Okay with the board. I would like to table items two and three. the next meeting just so we can look a little deeper into the cost of those. All right. Proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to, do you want a table or postpone? You want them automatically to come back up or yeah, you just we, want them laid on the table? We'll just let them come back up next week. All right. Uh, proposed revision from Alderman Maynard is to postpone items 11K2 and 11K3. Uh, for consideration at the uh, March 17, 2015 meeting. Those items are as follows. A request for approval to advertise for seal bids to upgrade sewer pump stations as required by EPA AOC CWA 04-2013-4761 and a request for approval to advertise for seal bids for cast in place pipe in installation services as required by EPA AOC CWA 04 2013 4761. Alderman Manor, is that your proposed revision? Yes, sir. Do I hear any objection? I don't have an objection, but I'd like a, a question for clarification. Uh, Mr. Devlin, uh, does putting this off, does this, what type of impact does this have on us meeting any EPA uh, requirement or mandate? Does pushing this off till our next meeting uh, ha affect that timeline? Yeah, I think we'll be okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection saying none? Those matters have been postponed until March 17th. Any further proposed revisions, Alderman Mayor? Boy, we, we need to decide when we want to interview fire chief candidates. I, I would like to propose if it is the will of the board that we recess this meeting until four o'clock on the 17th, which is our next scheduled meeting. Uh, everybody can take a minute to check your calendars or see. 
And so those, because currently we have how many candidates? Eight. Eight candidates. As of the close of business. Nine. Yeah. No, oh, that's right. We had a fifth internal candidate. Yeah, nine as of the close of business today. We're going to need to have some time to review those. And I just don't want to be here till midnight on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> is that a proposed revision? Yeah. Well, it is, yes. But I want to see if there's any objection at that time. I don't object, but I can't be here until 5. Okay. I don't have a problem waiting until 5. That gets us 30 more minutes anyway. Is that a proposed revision? Yes. Proposed revision to the agenda is to change the recess time in item, Roman numeral item 16 from 5.30 to 5 o'clock. Alderman Manor, is that your proposed revision? Yes, it is. Do I hear any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? Saying none. That matter <coughs> has been changed. Alderman Manor, do you have any further proposed revisions? No, sir. Are there any further proposed revisions from the members of the board? Any further proposed revisions? <coughs> Any further proposed revisions? Seeing not a motion to approve the agenda as revised is in order. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Maynard to approve the agenda as revised. Do we hear a second? Second. So motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. You now have before you the approval of the consent agenda. Is there any objection to the approval of the consent agenda as revised? Any objection? Any objection? Any objection? <coughs> Seeing none, the consent agenda as revised has been approved. Uh, your minutes were on the consent agenda, so that will take us to announcements and comments by the mayor and the members of the board. And I have just one tonight. Uh, we have a young man in the audience uh, who is uh, a Boy Scout working on his merit badge. Uh, could Mr. David Burnett stand? Welcome to the world of city government, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Are there any comments from the members of the board? Any comments from the members of the board? Seeing none, we'll move to citizen comments. At this time, do we have any citizen comments? <coughs> To the men and board, my name is Adam Tony Ward Seven. Um, citizens have just a few concerns. Um, the citizens have had enough. All right, uh, if we gonna run government, let's run government. Uh, a lot of staying away from home that let's think about we need to take care of home. Sanitation department trying to make a person mad enough to leave. All right, we need to stop. The police department, we need our police and something decent by the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Any further citizen comments? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Arlene Carthab, and I'm co chairing the Antibal County Branch NAACP Annual Banquet. And I want to thank you, Mayor, and the Aldermen for, you know, considering an ad and just want to invite everyone on April the 25th <coughs> at 7 o'clock at the Sports Place to please join us. And we're encouraging everyone to bring a youth, at least one or two youth, because we are focusing on youth this year. And the thing with equality <coughs> and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Cartel. Mm -hmm. Any further <coughs> citizen comments? Do we have any further citizen comments this evening? Any further citizen comments? All right, seeing none, uh, we have one public appearance scheduled tonight, uh, and it is the much-anticipated uh, architectural report uh, from Gary Schaefer. Thank 
technology fails us, we'll still be able to achieve this one extra one there for you. No, Mayor and board, good evening. We were asked to do a study to look at locating the police department either in the Cadence Bank building or in this building in City Hall. <coughs> and for the last month, we have been working with the mayor, with the chief administrative officer, with the chief of police and his staff, and we are tried to match the programmatic needs of the police department with the physical characteristics of these two buildings. And tonight I would like to present those efforts. My goal is to do this in just nine more slides. And uh, so, and hopefully at the end of that, we will be clear. We started with the current staff and their organizational chart. And as you can see, we currently have 55 sworn <coughs> personnel, 13 civilian personnel, and four part-time. When the City Hall staff and the court staff move out of this building, that would leave some additional <coughs> needs for the police in terms of custodian, receptionists, and bailiffs that, as I understand, sort of overlap currently. At this time, the police occupy 4,140 square feet of the existing building, but they have additional functions that are housed outside of the City Hall building. Although the board's quite familiar with the cramped conditions, I've included some images of the existing spaces to highlight how every space is multifunctional, which includes the hall and the restroom, are also being used as storage, so we're in very tight conditions. More importantly, though, it is to notice that we do not currently have holding or sally port capabilities in this building, which is extremely important in terms of a security issue. <coughs> when we took the chart of the activities and <coughs> personnel and we pr programmed that out, the police would need about 21,400 square feet, the holding would require about 2,000 square feet, and the sally port about 2,700. So the number we're looking at is about 26,000 square feet to house the needs of the police department. My intention is to present an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of these two buildings. I'm going to show three options that were, would be equal functionally and spatially and then look at the cost comparison of each building. Tonight I'll pre present just the scope of work and the cost for each option. But there were preliminary designs for these, each of these options that were reviewed and discussed in terms of the function by the police department and funding by the mayor and the CO. CAO. If we start with the bank building, it is a 1977 <laughs> building. In terms of the downtown, we would say one of our newer buildings. And it was done by Jones and Ma, a well known firm out of Memphis. And it has 53 parking spots, currently has 34,000 square feet of gross space with 28,000 square feet of usable space. It's a three-story building with an elevator. So when we think of this newish building downtown, but we start to test it against today's 2015 codes, we realize this building is 38 years old. And so it clearly does not meet the ADA code, nor does it meet HVAC, plumbing, electrical, and it has no fire protection. So <coughs> if we're talking about this as a building that we would want to use into the future, our goal would be to bring the building up to code. 
when we look at the City Hall building, there was an appraisal that was done by the city, but the appraiser didn't have a date with that building. And so I called my go-to guy uh, and felt that uh, Jack Wallace said he remembers 1948 or 1949. And so I would guess that's probably about right. And the building was originally designed by Stevens and Johnson. There was a question as to whether Overstreet designed this building, but he did not. It was Stevens and Johnson out of Starkville and Corinth that designed the building originally as a National Guard armory. There are 34 parking spots. There's 28,000 square feet of gross space, and currently you're using about 20,000 of the usable space. It's also a three-story building, but of course without an elevator. And if our 1977 building didn't meet code, this is a poster child for not meeting code when we look at, at this construction. So both buildings would have to be brought up to code. So, I have one quick question. On that last slide, you said currently in this city hall we're using 20,000 square feet. Is there other net usable space in this building? And there's that large stage area, which you could argue you're using then that there's kind of some storage in there. And the police are using somewhat that uh, parking area in the back. But I don't think of those as occupied spaces as much as these. And there's a little bit of additional space on that second floor that's used for storage, but it's not occupied. So the 20,000 square feet is the first floor and second floor where people are actually working. So <clears throat> we, we looked at three options. And the first option, we started with the assumption that we would accommodate the entire Starkville Police Department program, if possible, and we'd also bring both buildings up to meet code. And we anticipated that phasing would be required due to cost, so we decided this long-range master planning of both buildings would be the good way to start, and then if we needed to divide them <coughs> into phases, hopefully the first phase would fit into the future construction of the second phase and we wouldn't have to spend money to tear out things that we had just built at an earlier date. And so this assumption for both buildings is they'd be 100% renovated, they would accommodate the program, and they would meet the code. Well, starting with the bank building, we're at about 38,000 square feet. We would renovate that. We didn't design a sally port onto the building, but one could be established on the north side of that second level. So the total renovation cost of that would be $3.2 million. The sally port is about a half a million. And the cost, as I understand, to purchase the bank is $2.55 million. So the total cost would be 6.3, and that would totally renovate the building and totally solve all of the code situations. So in an apples to apples situation, we did the same thing with the city hall building. We renovated this building in its entirety, and Scott, that would include, we did the stage, we did the uh, parking area in the back, and by doing that, we were able to get a partial sally port into this building within the renovation cost of $3.78 million. So the cost of the sally port is in that number, and there's not a cost for this building. So this total project to bring both these buildings up was $3.8 million versus $6.3 million. We felt option one was an apples to apples. Uh, when we presented this, I believe the mayor felt that, that these figures would be a problem and gave us the second challenge to look at. And he suggested, what if there was a $400,000 budget for the uh, bank building and a $2 million budget for this building? What could be done? Again, we went back and worked with the chief and his staff to try to accommodate their functions within these buildings, within these budgets. 
And the primary concern with the bank building was security. And you think the bank is secure, because it certainly has a nice big vault in it, but police security is a tad different than uh, just <coughs> protecting money. And so it would require securing the front of the building in terms of entry, securing the back of the building. But as you know, the building's open from the first to second floor. So that would require security in just containing these areas per floor. And the other term of security that was important to the police was to create a holding area, which was also in this design. So we felt that with 855,000, we could secure that building, but everything else in the building would just be used exactly as it is. Now, with that, of course, nothing would have been done to address ADA, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, nor did that include fire protection. So that was, that $400,000 budget uh, came up to 80, 855000 plus the cost of the building. When we looked at this building with a $2 million budget, we were able to take a different strategy, and the strategy would be that the police would move their operation into the front part of the building, where they currently are, where the city offices are, where the building department, and that would give us this part of the building, which I call the motor pool part of the building. This originally was just one big open room with five bow trusses under, and you walked in and you looked at four walls. This notion would be to gut this entire motor pool building back to the original walls and structural system, and then we could build a new first floor, a new second floor in its entirety, while the police were able to still function out of the front part of the building, and in doing that, we would have then 65% of this building would be totally new. Non-combustible materials have the elevators, the stairs, the fire sprinkler systems, the ADA requirements, and the restroom requirements. And to do that was 2.435 million. What that would allow would be to have, as I said, 65% of the building renovated. The other 35%, some would just get reused in the front. We wouldn't do much of anything there. And we wouldn't renovate that stage area or the, uh, the garage area in the back. So that's the other 35%. But that would allow us to resolve the ADA issues 65% of the building would meet the HVAC problems. We designed all of the plumbing to be then in this new addition, so we could resolve the plumbing problems 100%. We'd have 65% of the electrical solved, and we would have a fire protection system in. So again, we told the mayor we couldn't do it for $2 million, but $2.43 million was this option, and we would have what we would call a partial police program. The third option the mayor gave us is, what if you only have $400,000, and if you only have $1,750,000 budget for these two buildings? Well, again, working with the police, I feel like we identified to secure that building was $855,000. So, the police did not feel that $400,000 would allow them to secure that building, and if they could not secure that building, then that would not be a good option for them. The $1,750,000 budget is interesting because it required a different strategy. With that, it would require using this existing building exactly the way it is. City Hall moves out. The building department moves out, the court moves out, and the police just <coughs> change the names on each of the doors, and they fill in all of the remaining spaces, and we don't make <coughs> any changes to the existing construction that's here. But 
the goal would be to try to make the building safer and try to start to resolve some ADA issues. So we would install an elevator into this existing construction. We would need some lifts to get to other level changes. We would put a fire protection system in. We would provide proper fire exits to get out of the building. Uh, proper restrooms, security system, particularly in the front of the building. We would, in this building, also create a holding area. The remaining money would be used to improve interior and exterior finishes. With that $1.75 million expenditure, we would make no progress. We'd make limited progress on ADA. We would not resolve ADA in its entirety. We would make no changes to HVAC, limited changes to the plumbing, no changes to electrical we would put a fire protection system in, and that would be 1.75 million, but that would be protecting wood construction that's 20 to 30 years old. Mr. Schaefer, can I ask a question real quick? So, uh, look at option two for another, for the additional 250, well, no, uh, so that's additional about 650, okay. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay, so, in conclusion, we have three options. We did our best to apples to apples compare them. And, um, and I know that the mayor has reviewed them, the chief and his staff have reviewed them. And so I present this to you tonight for your comments. Mayor, may I recognize? May I recognize? You may. Um, Mr. Um, Schaefer, thank you so very much for your um, very meticulous work with this project. Let's, let's focus a little bit on option number two, just a few questions. Uh, with regard to option number two, just to make sure I have a clear understanding, you used to work that the building would be gutted out. We would start from the bottom. I want to make sure there's no misunderstanding in the event. I don't know what the board's going to do, but let's just say the board chose that option. Tell me exactly when you say gutted out, I want to make sure I have a clear understanding we have a meeting of the minds here. And, uh, and in response to that question, let me know um, what type of um, budget could be some change orders um, once we get into that. But let, but tell me when you say good it out, just kind of let me know so I can have a good layperson understanding from the front of the building to the space that's going to be usable. Perfect. Yes, if sir. we go from the front of the building, yes, sir. That part that the police are currently in, and which if you look up there. The building department's up on that top, and the police chief is there, and the uh, offices are over on the right side. Okay, I'll call that the front of the building. That would remain the same, and the police would move in and occupy that space once City Hall and those folks left. Building department would leave. They would be in there. The, the original, where you see that little curved part of the building, that, this was called the motor pool part of the building. This was totally one space. Okay. When you walked in through that door, you looked at the wall on the east, you looked <coughs> at the whole tall wall on the south, and you looked at this wall on the north, which has, you've been back, has that senior <coughs> march and stage back there, and you would see this wall. So you saw the entire space is just one big room. So what we would recommend is we would take everything out of this big box. All of these walls, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, we would strip it straight back to the concrete floor and the concrete walls. Except the front part. You Except for the front, exactly. Now, okay, let me just make sure how far we come down from that front door when you said the front part. I'll make sure. Right where that ramp starts down okay. is where we would stop. Okay, Mayor, let me pause here. Chief, is that your understanding of how this should work? Yes or no? The gutting part, are you, that's the same understanding you have on this? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure. Okay, got it. Uh, now, Mr. Um, Schaefer, does this, you know, of course, if, if we go with this, does this budget also ex include something for exterior finishes for this building? We did not uh, in this budget because when we tried to hit that two million dollar number, we already knew we had headed over it. But on the other hand, uh, 
the exterior is weather tight <coughs> except for chief two leaks, <coughs> two leaks or three leaks in the roof, I believe. So no, there's no expenditure for exteriors right now. What would um, be your estimate based on your expert opinion as to you know improving the exterior to meet you know uh, some satisfactory appearance in accordance with this uh, budget that you're proposing? Just some ballpark. I'd idea. say two to three hundred thousand would put a new roof on it and totally paint the outside. Okay, and just and of course the building's main focus. But if we're going to keep them here, we want everything looking looking really nice. It's going you know we got to have a showcase where they all that you include also the parking area for that as well. Only in terms of securing the parking to get into the building. Uh, we're, we're trying to do a little makeshift sally port for safety, but no, we didn't put any additional money on the outside. But that number would be an option one. That was the, in other words, the three point, let's just peek at that, 3.78 million would renovate everything outside, inside, and all the space. But you're asking, what, could we add on to this number? We could. Yes, sir. Give me your um, your best uh, estimate. If we went with option two, uh, what do you think would be the total cost if we were to do the um, uh, the exterior finishes? <coughs> that, you know, something that's reasonable in your opinion from an architectural uh, point of view, and the parking, you know, the overlay and you know, the striping, if we, and with some exterior finishes. What do you think that figure would increase from 2.4 to what, in your opinion? 2.7. Okay, 2.7. You think that's a very uh, safe, conservative, and reasonable estimate? At this point, yes. yes sir. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Schaefer, may be um, some the, the top dollar? If, let's say the board goes with the 2.7. What do you think would be the top dollar, you know, factoring in any cost overruns in a change order, you know, given all your expertise and experience. What do you think would be the top dollar we want that with the 2.7? What do you think would be the maximum that we had to pay with any potential change order? Well, this has built into it okay. a 5% contingency. Okay. Okay. Has built into it uh, fees and expenses, <coughs> printing the project, advertising the project. So this is total project cost not construction cost. So if we went with your option to, as I understand it, and the exterior, which I think if we, the board goes with, we need to have the exterior. And so uh, then the parking would be about 2.7 million uh, versus the cadence we're, um, we're looking about a $7,800 difference. Uh, yes, except the. the uh, I'm sorry. The, it, I'm sorry. No, it'll be more than that because it's about six plus million on that uh, with that renovation cost. So right, it's a huge right. difference, about three point five million dollar difference in the two, roughly, right. more or less. But here, to me, is the telling part of these two comparisons. The right. I understand. All of that would still need to be done, and depending on, um, you know, those <coughs> would be expenses that would have to be done. And these expenses are already done in this option. Right. Uh, that's right. Very important a point you made. So basically about $2.7 million, and then our existing uh, building has the ADA, yes, and also the 65% of the plumbing, electrical, all that's done, whereas we're about $6-plus million for cadence, and we don't have the, all those ADA, electrical, the fire uh, extinguisher, sprinkler system. So. Um, so given all of your thorough work, you know, we've spent a lot of time on this, you know, you know all your thorough work and your um, uh, evaluations and things like that, it appears from uh, your options there, it appears that um, certainly it's going to take a lot, um, probably in excess of $6 million to go to the cadence where we can get this here for the $2.7 million. Uh, Mr. Schaefer, what do you think would be the... Um, the capacity in terms of growth. How long would this renovated building accommodate? Let's just say our department gets another 10 officers within um, <coughs> by June of uh, 2017. How um, long you think this building as renovated, if the board goes with it, how how long would this, you know, what time period would this accommodate our growth? Would be what number of years? Very good question. Yes, sir. Because that's where this number <coughs> becomes important. 
35% of the building, that stage area, which would be first and second floor stage area, and that area that I call the garage on the very back, don't have any renovation done in this. So we've got 35, 30% uh, 30 of the building still that we could expand into and renovate in the future. And, and it's under our roof and under our control. I believe the chief, chief, would you agree with this design, we could start business tomorrow with our staff and, and the folks that we have? Yes, sir. With, with, with that design, you could house what we have now, 55 officers. We've got another 10 to 15. It would still house that, um, be able to house that amount with the renovations. And Chief, that, you think this would come to at least about 15 years of growth, uh, over a period of 15 years of growth over at least 15, 10 or 15 years? Yes, sir, Vice Mayor, without a doubt. Yes, unless, unless the city just goes through a yes, drastic uh, growth yes, spurt. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Without a doubt. That's good. That's good. That's what I wanted to hear. That's good. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Further questions or comments from Mr. Schaefer? I've got Walker, then Carver. It looks like Walker's yielding to Carver. Okay. Alderman Carver. <clears throat> First of all, thank you for doing this because I believe uh, this is an apples to apples um, document that you did. I'd also request at the end of the day that this be put on our website uh, for public knowledge. Um, this is very well, I mean, this is a good presentation. It's a lot better than I thought it would be at one point, but um, I think you came in unbiased. I think you, uh, you wanted to just give us some facts. A lot of the notes I took were <clears throat> Politically, we've been asking for numbers for a while, and I think when you you finally came in, and, and I, you know, it goes from a 1.3 million dollar project to almost five million more than that to meet the code requirements, and that's 6.3. So I don't think any of option one, in my opinion, is feasible. Um, you know, if we're going to make one of the code requirements as a city, you know, pretty much rules out number one. And both of them are just pretty expensive. I think Alderman Perkins is on to something with option two in the city hall. I like that, and I like the fact that that leaves that whole multiple area for, uh, I guess, from the ramp down to be basically going to be new construction, totally. uh, code compliant. Um, and then, you know, I just, um, you know, I just get nervous about this kind of thing. I think sometimes we jump the gun again today. I mean, ironically, of all buildings, the old bowling alley is back up for sale. And we could buy that for less than either one of these options with 30,000 more square feet. And I just, I get nervous sometimes about, I'm glad we didn't decide anything on this last meeting because, I mean, here we are really with the, with the numbers come in. And I think you did an excellent job of that. We really can start <coughs> looking at where we want to get our, our, our police uh, force if they need to stay here. Um, obviously, this building, as, as it sits now, is not uh, feasible for them. But I think with that 65% renovation, uh, for this whole motor pool area that, you know, then that still leaves, I guess, 30 to 35 percent building renovation left. <coughs> but I, I just, I'm kind of letting people know where, where I stand on the options. And then, you know, it's just, it's interesting to see when these numbers start coming in of how little we can actually do with the amount of money we thought we could do from the start. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm kind of like Alderman Perkins in this. I see of all three of these, <coughs> uh, option threes don't even really meet any code compliance except for fire protection. But option two, right now, as it sits, of all, Six of those seems to be, in my opinion, uh, the one that most uh, realistically reaches some of the goals that we wanted to have as a board and as uh, a housing uh, for housing for our police force. So I'll yield the floor. Alderman Walker. Chef, thank you very much for your presentation. I agree with Alderman Carver and Vice Mayor Perkins that uh, this was a, a very good comparison of apples to apples. Um, uh, we always are so a little bit surprised. Uh, when you think something might cost one thing and you see what it really takes to make something a police station, it certainly can be an eye-opening experience. So I think that was something that, uh, like Alderman Carver said, we've been asking for, and, and this helps better understand where, where we are and how we move forward, or how we might move forward. The question I had on option two, um, and this maybe addresses some of the vice mayor's <coughs> question uh, too, when you talked about things on the outside, it says 100% ADA, yes. Is that 100% of ADA once we get inside the building, or is that does that get us from Lafayette Street or Lampkin Street into the building? Yes. It, yes. It, it would get us in, and and then we would move all. Well, we would have to have two lifts to get up to the police level. I'll call, which is about three feet higher, and then when you get back to this part, then you would be in all new construction with new elevators 
and this part would all be at the same level. I mean, how crazy yeah. that the second floor has three different levels on the second floor. So uh, it would be all new construction, and that's how I feel we could get everyone in and out of the building. What helps, the police need that front secured. Right now, with your other functions, people have to get back and get to the mayor and get to the building department. So people are wandering through this building all day long. But when it's just a police building, there will be a secure front <coughs> lobby, and then we'll handle ADA from there through. And it's a much easier task than what we <coughs> currently have with all these different level changes. Alderman Carver. Um, in, I guess in your design, one thing I'd like to, I guess, ask Alderman, I mean, not Alderman, uh, Engineer Kemp, is when we start looking at this process on this building, I have an opinion that this parking lot will need to be repaved and restriped, and if there could be an additional two or three, two or three parking spots gained by repaving, but I mean, restriping, how much would that cost ballpark to pave this out? Restripe it, thirty thousand, or resurface it. <laughs> And the only reason I'm throwing is I know Stark Cafe's back lot was around 80? 50? 60? Okay. Mr. That's probably going to bump it up. I guess I would say once you're doing the renovation on this side is use this west side for entrance and that way you can meet your ADA compliant, you know, have an elevator or whatever you need and then, and then secure that front down to where if it's, I guess you're saying that's going to be administrative type offices or, or something, you know, but my thought would be you'd want, to, you'd want to secure that area up there and have the general public coming in from this side. That way they could also have access to the elevators if they needed it. But just a thought. Thank you. Further questions or comments for Mr. Schaefer? Alderman Wynn. Mr. Schaefer, thank you so much tonight for your presentation. I think I can safely say this. I think as board members and the public, we want a great place that our police officers and our chief can be proud to call home. And I think tonight you've hit the mark with this. Thank you so much for the work that you did to present this for us tonight. You're welcome. Thank you. <coughs> Any further questions or comments from the members of the board? Alderman Maynard. Board, as we look at these options, I have to look a little bit deeper at, at the ones presented. Do we feel tonight that, or, or I guess I feel tonight that we can take payments off the table? And, and I would like to make a motion that we officially pull that if it's the will of the board. Um, having seen these, and I, I do have a motion written that moving that the city officially and formally cease negotiations with Cadence Bank regarding the city's potential purchases of the Cadence Bank main branch building located 301 East Main Street, Starfield, Mississippi. That the letter of intent dated June 30th, 2014, executed by the city on June 15th, 2014, and Cadence on July 31st, 2014, which contained a non-binding proposal and expression of mutual intent to negotiate in good faith be immediately rendered null and void with no further force, effect, or application to any and all subcommittees established by the city to negotiate with Cadence Bank regarding the subject matter be immediately disbanded. Alderman Maynard, I see you have reduced that motion to writing. Uh, it is being passed to the... All right, we'll give Alderman Perkins a moment to review. The uh, motion has been reduced to writing. Uh, it's been passed to the city clerk and it's been read. Uh, without objection, I will not ask for it to be reread. Seeing no objection, do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Uh, and uh, I will speak to this uh, as well. Uh, I, I was a big proponent uh, of uh, pursuing the uh, Cadence Bank uh, transaction. Uh, and uh, the reason I always thought the numbers would ultimately work on this project 
is $2.55 million <coughs> was a very generous offer uh, for the space they have uh, from Cadence Bank. Uh, I think most of you uh, have toured the facility uh, over the last year, uh, <coughs> and you would agree with me that it is a premium office space. Uh, and uh, the assumption that I made uh, was uh, getting premium office space uh, at, at a great value uh, would offer us uh, uh, a better financial opportunity uh, than substantially uh, <coughs> renovating uh, this space, which in its current condition is substandard. Uh, and that's where uh, Mr. Schaefer has been very helpful. Uh, he has been very thorough in how he has approached uh, uh, the two potential programs. Uh, the <coughs> Uh, thing that I didn't account for is premium office space does not necessarily uh, translate easily uh, to the unique needs of a secure police facility. And I think when you go all the way through that exercise of providing uh, a construction program for the unique security needs of a police facility, it becomes clear that the numbers don't work on uh, using Cadence Bank for a future police station, uh, certainly as compared to doing a substantial renovation in this building. Uh, so uh, for that reason, uh, I am very, very appreciative uh, of uh, Cadence Bank for an offer uh, that uh, I believe was very, very generous uh, and in the community-minded spirit uh, that that bank has always shown but uh, I, I think it's clear at this point uh, in making a policy decision uh, for the city uh, that uh, uh, Alderman Maynard's motion is timely and I would certainly recommend this approval. Alderman Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mayor, I likewise was a strong proponent of um, acquiring the uh, cadence property for the um, Starfield Police Department. Uh, given all of the discussions, including all the motions that we have taken at this table, including the uh, thorough and meticulous presentation tonight, I'm going to um, support the motion from the uh, gentleman from five. Um, hopefully, once this motion is approved, um, there is a subsequent motion that would go as far as approving uh, the um, option number two and if there is a, a motion for the option number two I would like for that motion to not only include what's on the board there but to also to um, include the cost that Mr. Schaefer has uh, verbally rendered to us tonight for exterior finishes and I'd like to see the motion to include what the gentleman from one offered to um, do the overlay of the entire parking area, including any striping. So we will have um, an excellent place for our police department that is uh, well uh, deserving to have this type of operation. So we still will be looking about $2.7 million plus, and we have to remember that during the 0913 term, there was an eight million dollars in certificates of participation, and it was the uh, mindset of the administration, the governing body at that time, that 6.7 million would be used for the um, new city hall, and 1.3 million would be used for that matter, like option number two to upgrade the uh, current city hall. So, I think the option number two. Um, would be very workable with the exterior because we not only want to do the interior as proposed, but the exterior so the outer exterior of the building will look really nice and then the parking. So, Mayor, I'm hoping that we can get that motion because if we're going to take Cadence off the table tonight, which I'm going to support, I would like to have a motion to do what I just mentioned. And I further want to uh, commend uh, uh, the, um, the entire staff of, of Cadence for their complete cooperation and availability of um, making the, um, 
the bank and, and, uh, and, the, and the property there to uh, available to the city of Starkville for municipal purposes. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tony has uh, done a very exemplary job in being available and providing information. So we want to com commend them because we want to continue that uh, very uh, strong spirit of cooperation. So gentlemen from five, um, you know, given all the things that we've gone through, all the motions and things uh, over this term, I support that. But I wish we can get a motion to follow to uh, at least wrap this up, all these problems, so we won't be having continuous discussions. You know, we, we, I think we owe that to ourselves tonight. Let's go ahead and support this motion. And then we have a motion to do option number two, plus the renovation cost, plus the parking. And therefore, then you know, we can put this matter to bed and uh, then we can, uh, we can come back. Mr. Schaefer, I would think sometime next year we'll probably can get started on this in 2016 at the latest and hopefully sometime before this term, uh, the first part of this 2017, we can have this completed because the, uh, the administration should be moving out of this building to the new building by the end of this year. So, Mayor, I'm going to yield the floor, but let me say we let's support this motion. And if we can do a subsequent motion to uh, do what I just said, the option number two plus the renovation costs and the parking, and I think we'll still be within budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Further discussion? Alderman Carver. <clears throat> I can see where this is going, but I will say I don't feel comfortable voting tonight. And the, and the reason is this, is I want to, I just think there's too many financials that we need to let get polished out and hammered off and, and make sure this works. And I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a good option, but I, I just want to make sure my constituents have the opportunity to read this in the paper three or four times and uh, and get back with me on their thoughts. And uh, this is a big deal, and it's a big deal to, to push through on the first night looking at this option. But um, again, I think Mr. Schaefer came in unbiased. I think that he um, he just did a fair comparison, and um, I, I do like this option. I, but I, again, I, you know, got to let the pot simmer sometimes, and I think this is the time to let it simmer. Two weeks is no hurry. At the end of the day, looking back, uh, if it passes in a couple of weeks, it won't matter. It won't have my vote tonight, but you know, if, if my constituents approve of it and it <coughs> seems to be that the the uh, financing could work out, then uh, I strongly consider this. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not going to rush the gentleman from one, but but if if we wait two weeks, I just make sure that we have some commitment. We we'll go ahead and put some finalization, and <coughs> if we be committed, maybe next within the next four weeks or something, and we can get something final out for the police department because we are taking this off the table. We're trying to move forward to some completion. So your point is well taken. So hopefully within, within the next two meetings or something after, you know, I think there's plenty of time for public notice and public participation, public involvement, and we want to hit, get feedback. So, I mean, your point is taken, so we can we can do that. So may I, I support the gentleman's motion from five? Mr. Mayor, may I recognize? You may. I agree with the gentleman from one as well. You know, we, in the presentation at the previous meeting, we allocated the opportunity to put $2 million toward the City Hall renovation. And going back and looking at those numbers this past week, I think we can easily find the additional <coughs> 435000 If we're going to add another three hundred, I think that's just going to, we're going to have to take a couple of weeks to to find the best option. I do agree with the gentleman from six and with our city engineer that if we're going to address it all, we need to address the exterior and we definitely need to address the parking situation. So we just have to sharpen the pencil and go back and look a little deeper. Um, but I, I, I agree with the gentleman from one that a little time, that'll give us time to, to really flush that out. Yeah, one more. Thought while I'm thinking about the reason I, I I think this is a good idea is um it's, it's I guess is addressing the facade of the front and it'll look like a new building. The reason this building will work and maybe another location downtown wouldn't is because of that large area where you're calling the motor pool. Or this is basically one four wall big building that w it will be in uh, like we like saying you get a car it's a new old car. So this even though the location couldn't be better, part 65 percent of this building will be brand new. Uh, except for the structure holding, um, but you know it, the location is great. Uh, it, it's recognizable, but I really I'm going to have a lot of questions on the ADA accessibility and entrance and back to what you I think you were leading us in the right path, saying that front needs to be secured or uh, you know it's from the from the Sally Port standpoint and then um, things like that. I just I think there's a lot of drawings left to be done and. 
some things you can help us out with, but I, I like the way you're, you're steering the ship, and I like this presentation. Mr. Mayor, I do have one question for Mr. Schaefer. <coughs> in, in the roof from the, what I call the Kwanzaa hut back, is, that, is this renovation replacing 100% of that part of the roof? Oh, the, the roof is beautiful. Oh, it You've is. been up there to look at. It's the most beautiful part of this building. Nobody <laughs> sees it. There are these incredible bow trusses with this beautiful wooden arch that if we were sitting up there looking at that, we'd say it's the most incredible building in Starkville, Mississippi. Nobody's ever seen it up there <coughs> once this got built. And, of course, all the National Guard looked at it and said, Oh, it's just National Guard building. It's gorgeous space with a structural system that you couldn't afford today. So mm -hmm. it's it's very well, nice. It's check. just as a lay-in ceiling between you. If you go out the, the back, particularly from the second level through the police, and get on a little storage area, you look up, you'll say it's a gorgeous space that nobody sees it. I should have put those pictures. I actually have pictures of it. I should have put them in. So we want to open that up, stain it. That we would like to expose parts of it and run the structural system and the, but the mechanical system has to go up in there also but it would look very nice Alderman Carver how many parking spots are out here in this parking lot <laughs> what's the total count here you've got it in your first slide right but that included it's 10 less than what I had last uh, so this 24? 24, and those other 10 and counted sort of going around the back and then coming down this side. I think there are four there and six on this side. That's about 24 over there. Thank you. Any further discussion on Alderman Maynard's motion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Alderman Maynard's motion, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed? No. It's unanimous. Uh, is there any further discussion on this topic? Uh, any any further questions uh, for Mr. Schaefer? Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Thank you. If I could just you, say, the, this could not have happened without the police department's involvement. Were instrumental conceptually, detail-wise. They worked incredibly hard over a month and. Chief, thank you so much, and thank your staff for all their efforts. We could not have done this without you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, and I'll just say, I, I was impressed with how you all work together. Uh, I think most of the police command, uh, like me, started as uh, proponents of the Tatex transaction. And I, I think the police command would tell you if we could afford the full $6 million program in cadence, that's what they would want. Uh, but what was really interesting to me and uh, what I think you guys deserve a lot of credit for is uh, when the numbers started to take form uh, you saw opportunities in this building and an opportunity that was more feasible and uh, you you were willing uh, to uh, look at this building and explore the possibilities in this building I, I, I think you all deserve a lot of credit for not just getting to the answer that uh, we, we all thought was the answer that we wanted to get to. That's not easy to do. Thank you all. I, I think they all deserve it. All right. Uh, the next matter that you have before you is a consideration of a resolution <laughs> authorizing and addressing and, and, and directing the issuance of general obligation bonds uh, series 2015 for the city of Starkville, Mississippi to support industrial or other economic development projects approved and recommended by the Golden Triangle Development Link and the principal amount of five million dollars. This resolution will result in a tax increase of a minimum of two minutes. Yeah. This is the final step uh, in uh, your issuance of bonds uh, for the Innovation District. Uh, Mr. Deason is here, Bond Council is here. We certainly can discuss this, but uh, nothing has changed uh, uh, since uh, the last time we discussed it. Uh, I don't think, gentlemen, is there anything that needs to be discussed? No, uh, this, is, this is the final act uh, to uh, give them legal authority to issue those bonds and uh, give Mr. Deason uh, the ability to start building uh, an industrial park. Yeah. <laughs> 
So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Maynard uh, to approve of a resolution authorizing and directing the issuance of the <coughs> obligation development bond series 2015 of the city of Starkville, Mississippi to support industrial or other economic development projects. Approved and recommended by the Golden Triangle Development Link in the principal amount of $5 million as presented. Alderman Maynard, that's your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. All right, let's do it by show of hands. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please see by raising your hand. I have uh, four in favor and one against. Are my numbers right? Correct. Yep. All right. This measure passes. The yeah. next matter on the agenda. Mr. Wong. Mayor. Yeah. Just to make sure everybody understands, this does authorize and direct the issuance of the bond to go forward to validation. We do have a sale date, so we will have to come back to that. All right. But that's just uh, receiving the kids and making them. <laughs> so you will have. One more really final right. step. It's not, uh, technically, it's not authorizing and, and directing, but it is nailing down the sales of 11 months. And that'll right. be on, your, on the May, first May meeting. Perfect. The next matter on the agenda is the consideration of a resolution of the Board of Aldermen uh, to authorize uh, the execution of an agreement uh, with Neil Schaefer. Absolutely. Motion has been made by Alderman Maynard to approve a resolution of the Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville, Mississippi, authorizing the execution of an agreement with Neil Schaefer for engineering services and other professional services <coughs> in connection with the construction and installation of public improvements to support the Innovation District Industrial Park. This resolution is in association. Uh, this resolution is in association with the matter that will result in a tax increase of at a minimum. <laughs> Two mils, uh, as presented. Alderman Manor, is that your motion? Yes, sir, but to be clear, it's not two plus two, it's a total of two for the bond. Right. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Manor, do you wish to speak on the merits? No, discussion. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Nay. Uh, by a vote of four in favor, with one against, and I have. Uh, Perkins, as the only member in opposition, uh, this measure passes. The next matter on the agenda is a request for approval of claims document. Uh, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, a presentation on the consolidation <coughs> of electric and public services. Uh, we'll give uh, Joel a moment to reconfigure the room. As he does that, Mr. Kemp and Mr. Devlin. Uh, you like to make your way forward? City control. This is this is these are still city departments. We are just moving the, the administrative functions together. The, the other piece is to satisfy requirements that we have with Tennessee through our affiliation with the Tennessee Valley Authority and to satisfy the Public Service Commission. We'll be tracking. We'll continue to track these enterprises as separate revenue streams. However, there is an opportunity we we believe down the road to. To share the funding of positions and uh, and realize economies of scale through uh, through those efficiency gains as well. Uh, but looking at the general structure, and I'll try to stand aside so here's so the public can see it as well. Uh, we are recommending a single manager, the, uh, and we would propose that Terry Kemp would be the general manager of the new enterprise. 
Under that, there would be a manager of customer service and administration, a system administrator. These are where the changes flow in. A manager of electric operations and engineering. This is currently Tommy Sullivan and will remain Tommy Sullivan. And then a manager of water and sewer operations and engineering. And this is the role that Mr. Devlin uh, would uh, would fill in the uh, in the new organization. It is a uh, he still uh, he still is supervising all of the staff that are and all of the function that is currently under water and electric. It's just as part of the new enterprise. We have a manager of accounting and finance, and then a warehouse manager. Uh, all of this is these are not new positions that we're talking about here. This is all existing, but there's just an opportunity to share responsibility within the function. A couple of changes in new in new positions that we are asking for. Um, as there will be considerable, uh, as we're finding our way through this, we anticipate that we will need uh, and some administrative support, specifically the contract administrator, the city attorney can tell you that we are flowing more contracts to him from these two enterprises than probably the rest of the city combined at this point. This gives us an opportunity to track these on the ground within, within this new organization and we feel that it offers uh, a great efficiency gain. Also, understanding that we'll be realigning some responsibilities um, as we're tracking the uh, as we're tracking the two enterprises separately. We're requesting uh, an entry level accounting clerk position. Uh, we uh, we do anticipate that this would be a position that requires four year degree in in an accounting related field. But we think that it offers us. Uh, a great opportunity to manage the to uh, to improve our management of the two revenue streams going forward. A uh, a third change here, where you see customer service representative. This uh, currently, this is this is what we call these are the people that we call cashiers. Uh, the 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 world of the clerk is changing, uh, and we're and this is for us to evaluate that within our own, within our own structure understanding that that a simple cat given our new reliance on uh, e-commerce and uh, and understanding where our customers seem to be going in, in their in their method of, of coming to us and doing business with us we're focusing more on global on a global customer service experience as opposed to a single cashier and so what we would propose where traditionally we have had four cashiers we would propose three customer service representatives and a service coordinator now, the service coordinator is technically a new position, but in reality, there has been a, there was a fourth cashier. This this customer service coordinator really is someone that's going to speak to a number of needs that are uh, everything from directing traffic, being that first experience that the customer has, all the way through to assisting in collection, uh, in billing errors, in a in a wealth of uh, of. Uh, I guess duties that, that we are sort of farming out throughout the building, but that really makes sense living in one spot. So we would propose that, you, that we're traditionally we've had the four cashiers, we would have three customer service representatives and a new coordinator and a and a service coordinator. Uh, the difference; these are traditionally some of our lowest paid employees at grade five. We are recommending a move to grade six for these three, and uh, and just so you know, two of Two of the employees here, given the given the ten years with us and current rates of pay, have already grown beyond the grade five pay scale, so they're outside of the pay scale anyway. So moving them to six puts them back in a back in an environment where they can continue to grow with us. Um, uh, but we thought it was appropriate to do at all levels. And then the new service coordinator position we would recommend. We said eight or nine, eight at grade eight. These are the changes that we are recommending to the global chart. We uh, we're proud of those. Um, I'll come back to this in a minute for questions. But uh, but moving to the next one, this is what our new, this is what we are proposing, respectfully at, on the water side. Uh, as it stands now, these a number of these uh, <coughs> of these organizational structures are a bit longer. But we but understanding that there is some, that we have new needs to meet. Specifically, the EPA and <coughs> consent. We have the mandate to do um, our automated metering infrastructure that has to be implemented, as well as just understanding some of the mandates that have come from you as it relates to dealing with the HR infrastructure, groundwater, a number of other issues. So, we've uh, we have created a uh, effectively a new directorate or reassigned one a uh, a lead foreman spot to deal with that. Uh, what we're excited about is we believe that that will create opportunity 
for some of some of the employees that are currently in this uh, sort of down the organizational chart. Uh, we believe this creates opportunity for some of those employees that want to grow to find opportunity within the new organization. We're very excited about the opportunity, we believe, to, uh, to handle, to handle uh, pretty much everything in this new organizational structure internal. And, uh, and uh, we believe that this will set us up to be successful in water and sewer going forward. Um, one new position that we are asking for here is uh, uh, a contract engineer or engineering intern. This is just understanding that, that the, uh, as we have an electric where we're able to, where we have more of a history of focusing on long-term system design, we've not traditionally had that functionality in water. Uh, Mr. Well, it's, we have, Mr. Devlin has had to do it in addition to all of his other administrative duties, and it's really more than one person can wear, or it's more hats than one person can wear effectively. So what we're doing is we're, we anticipate that over the long term, this contract engineer slash engineering intern becomes a system engineer in water and electric, I mean, in water and sewer, just as we have with Jason Horner and electric. But in the short term, this is a position we want to grow into. And so uh, in an effort to give us some immediate relief and in an effort to crawl before we walk, this is a, uh, this is a request to get us started down that road. Uh, a quick look at the... Uh, at the uh, electric operation. This will look familiar to you as this is our current organizational structure on the, uh, on the operational side of electric. Now, uh, coming back to the, to the beginning, uh, a couple of things that, that we want to mention about what we're requesting tonight. This was a, uh, these are two of our largest departments. Combining them was a fairly heavy lift for, uh, or, or I should say, even coming to a proposed structure to combine them was a fairly heavy lift. And this is the best that we've been able to do without actually moving people into positions. What we're requesting tonight is, is just what's in the packet. Uh, approval to move forward with the combination, understanding that we want to take the next 90 days to, to work on what, to work on final job descriptions, to work on understanding that as we, as we have heard from you as it relates to outsourcing, that that you want us to manage as much of this enterprise with, with our own human resources as we possibly can. We want to, uh, we want to take the opportunity <coughs> to, to start with what we've got here and then come back to you in the next 90 days, <coughs> offer final job descriptions for, you, for your approval, as well as any tweaks that we see need to be made as we, as we go through the process of moving into this new structure. We, uh, we, we understand that where this is the best that we've been able to do today, do today, it may not be the best that we can give you once we get into the process. So our request is just that, to, uh, to move forward with, with this organizational structure and, uh, and begin the, the process of working on final job description to come back for your approval within the next 90 days. Any questions? <coughs> Again, how many positions, I know there's accounting clerk, how many other positions would have to be created in total? We're, we're creating two new positions here uh, on the on the overall oper on the overall administrative side, and then we are creating a uh, a contract, basically a part time engineering position on the water side. The rest we believe that we can manage with the existing workforce and then realigning some duties there. Is this going to require any kind of rate increase in the future? We, we don't anticipate that it will. Um, this is. We've got, for example, on, on the on the water and, uh, and sewer side now, we've got Margo, who does an outstanding job, but just her role in the new organization looks a little different. And so uh, some of the accounting duties that she's doing, we're moving across. But also there's there's a tremendous amount of work that the clerk's office currently does for water and sewer. We anticipate that there would be an opportunity to transition some of that off, create some bandwidth for the folks from the clerk's office. And then there's administrative fees that the enterprise is <coughs> on. But we think that there's a way to manage, to manage that without rate increase. What about second in command when Mr. Kemp's out? Does that go to Mr. Devon and others five or six on that third tier? But who will um, be in charge when he's out? That, that, that is one that <coughs> we view everyone on this tier to uh, to be at the same rank within the organization. So I would leave it to Mr. I would leave it to Mr. Kemp to make that decision as needed. I mean it's uh, but uh, but 
traditionally, if he has to be out for an edge, Terry does a great job of being available to all of his uh, area heads, all of his managers, and uh, and generally he continues to serve as a department head even when he's not here. It's just electronically. How do y'all feel about it? You know, like I think uh, Taylor said, I think this is a, a model of what a lot of utilities are looking for if you look to the future. Uh, I think as we continue to really try to be that one spot for the customer, and we're trying, I think you know, fundamentally that's what we're trying to do, is look at it from a customer perspective, how do we do that? Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think there's going to be some, uh, as we go through this over that next 90 days, or even the next 90 days as we continue to refine it with technology, uh, it makes, it makes mm -hmm. sense uh, from my standpoint. And I think we've always worked close together. I think this gives an opportunity to optimize resource, share things a little bit more in the future that we've not been able to in, in the past. So, that's it. Here's, I can jump in on the back of that. What makes this work <coughs> is that both of these guys currently have the same mission, which is effectively service, reliability, and st stability. And here, what's the other one? Well, it's, it's, serve, it's reliability and it's uh, rates or availability and then relationship. That's all about the customer. We're in the customer service. Mm -hmm. so, so both of these guys are tracking in that direction anyway. This just gives them an opportunity to work with <coughs> Oh, I, I'm really excited about this. Uh, you know, uh, we would, like Taylor said, we've been talking about it for almost a year, I guess. Right. And it's finally, you know, has the potential to, to get implemented tonight. And, and uh, it's like Mr. Kemp said, it's, it's I just think having a, a, a one group that's focused on our utility customers, and that's at the end of the day, that's those those are the ones we want to make sure they have the, the best possible experience. And I think this organizational structure supports that. Uh, as Taylor mentioned, um, in the TVA service area, it's very unusual to have the water and the electrics as separate departments. It's you know it just makes sense that they're both utilities, and they should be under one director. Um, as, uh, as as Taylor mentioned, um, and and a little bit I've been down, I've uh, kind of been a, uh, a squatter down at the Starkville Electric Department um, for for a while. I've, Andrew and I've been down there, and I I'll tell you what, it's it, it's really exciting down there under Mr. Kemp's leadership. <coughs> just seeing how you know they're they're embracing technology and trying to move forward uh, to become a world class organization. I, you know, just to to have. Some Somebody else just get in under that and just you know ride his coattails up. It just, it's just very exciting for me, it really is. Thank you, Alvin Mayer. Sierra, Mr. Taylor. How many new employees is Mr. Kemp going to be responsible for with this merger? Uh, we're going to be forty. Be thirty five to forty. Um, Walker. I'm not against this model. I think this has a lot of p potential. Um, I do have some, some questions uh, and things just to clarify. So right now we're talking about adding three new positions and upgrading at least two or two and a half to three additional positions. My question, one question I have is um, explain to me how the revenue works and we're going to keep that. So right now uh, you pay your, your bill it goes, the electric part goes through uh, the straight to electric, the other goes to our city clerk. Is that how that works? So how, is, how will that change in the future? So will it continue to go to the city clerk or will it now under this model go all directly uh, to, to one clerk and is that, that's one of the new positions, correct? Uh, eventually, that, eventually, yes, we anticipate that the revenue streams. Now, in the short term, it's Obviously, this is a public utility. We deal with the regular reporting requirements on exactly how this cash comes in. In the short term, we would continue to track revenue as we have in the past. But yes, our plan would be eventually uh, understanding that the entire bill is currently being paid at the electric department anyway to, uh, to con continue tracking that revenue separately, but have, uh, have the water piece stay there for, for tracking to relieve, 
to relieve the clerk's office of some of the now ultimately the clerk is still going to be responsible for this so she's she's going to be getting readily updated on this but for example right now on the purchasing side um, when they prepare the docket for you water and sewers included in the, <coughs> the, of the clerk's office repairs and that's a that is Lisa would you say that is the bulk of the invoices you get for, for a, from a single department for a docket I mean it's it's a big number so yeah I mean if there's an opportunity to uh, <coughs> to track those invoices those purchase orders and invoices app if there's the bandwidth to do it there that's a bandwidth that we can create in the clerk's office it's current that currently is funded through uh, through the administrative fee that they put to pay for the clerk's office there's an opportunity to realize some efficiency here <coughs> I think to add on to that, the revenue streams will always be different, and that's contractually. That's right. You know, the money we're talking about comes from those customers we collect from and stuff, and at the end of that month, <coughs> it's broken apart and put into different buckets or accounts so that we can track it all. That would be the same concept we would talk about here, so it's not rolling into a one front come in will still be divided and then each each the way I would say back what he would say Taylor was talking about is each one of those enterprises will be separate where you can look at where those dollars go to because that affects the rate issue. And then all of that information will be transferred like we're doing right now to the city clerk's office for claims dockets, for checks, transfers and stuff like that. Is, was that was that what you were asking? Yeah, I think that begins to, to, to get at it. And right I, now, is right, we're getting it right now into one. So we just modify the process and then just break it apart and then keep that from a budget tracking standpoint. Um, but here again, it will still be for the board. Yeah, I'll be ready. You may. Uh, I move approval. <coughs> Consolidation of Starkville Electric Department, Starkville Public Services, to become the Starkville Utilities Department Executive, 8 a.m. Man, that's March 4th. That's tomorrow. No, 2015. And I would tag on to that to include an immediate 10% pay increase for Terry Kemp as he's taking on. 40 new employees as far as the supervisory role. Do you want all of that about the 40 new employees in the motion? Uh, no, no, you just say to include a 10% pay increase for Terry Kemp effective immediately. All right, so the motion from Alderman Maynard is the approval of the, he, he moves approval of the consolidation of the Starkville Electric Department and Starkville Public Services to the Starkville Utilities Department effective 8 a.m. March 4th, 2015 and uh, also including an immediate 10% uh, uh, pay raise for uh, general, general manager uh, Terry Kemp. Uh, the mayor just for clarification, is that with all of, as it was spelled out in the packet, the six items that are listed there? Yes, sir. But, but yeah, let's tag that with an as presented. Uh, yes. All right, so the motion would be uh, the approval of the consolidation of the Starkville Electric Department and the Starkville Public Services Department to the Starkville Utilities Department effective at 8 a.m. March 4th, 2015, incorporating all of the proposed changes as presented and also including an immediate 10% uh, uh, pay raise for Terry Kemp. Alderman Maynard, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. <coughs> Discussion. Alderman Perkins. Uh, Mayor, will you repeat that? The Vice Mayor had to step out for me. Will you repeat that motion, please? The motion was for the approval of the consolidation of Starkville Electric Department and the Starkville Public Services Department to the Starkville Utilities Department, effective at 8 a.m. March 4th, 2015 and incorporating all of the proposed changes as presented and also including an immediate 10% pay raise for Terry Kemp. Discussion. Any further discussion? Alderman Carper. That's the first time I've heard about the 10% and, and no disrespect to you, but like how many more hours a week would you think that you'd be adding under this organizational chart? Personally? Personally, I mean. <coughs> Okay. 
can, can well, I ask? Well, 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 as it relates to the, to the pay increase criteria, <coughs> this is not something that, that staff brought forward tonight, so we're, we may be less prepared to, uh, to answer those questions, but, but, uh, but certainly this, Mr. Kemp will have a wealth of new responsibilities managing the, the increased workforce. You, you know, I'm going to speak to it for a second. You, 10 percent, in my opinion, is too low. Uh, you, you cannot do this. Uh, he is taking on a, a large department uh, under his supervision, and it's not a matter of the number of hours. It's a matter of the uh, liability that he takes on as a supervisor, the additional <laughs> accountability that he takes on both to you and the general public. Uh, uh, again, I think 10 percent uh, is uh, probably not high enough. Uh, also bear in mind uh, that Mr. Kemp currently uh, makes less uh, than one of his operational managers does. Uh, co combine that uh, with the fact that he would be heading uh, what would be uh, one of, if not the largest departments in the city. Uh, I, I believe the 10% uh, pay raise is not only justified, uh, it, it would be uh, a disservice to Mr. Kemp if you did this uh, and, and did not uh, <coughs> give him a pay raise. Alderman Wynn. Mr. Mayor, for once, you and I agree tonight. <laughs> I'm supportive of this, Mr. Kemp. This is embraced. You'll take on additional responsibilities, huge responsibilities. And for that, I believe, whether it would be you or anyone else that's sitting in your seat, that you, with the city needs to compensate you. And for that, I'm supportive of this. Further discussion? Alderman Walker. I think there is a lot of merit to this. My, my question is, and there's been a lot of hard work and heavy lifting, so you said, to get, get us to this point. Um, my, my question, my question is, why does this need to be passed tonight? Uh, and without without taking, it, it reminds me a little bit of, of the cadence. I would like to see some numbers. I would like to see some of those. Do you need us to pass this tonight for you to be able to go and take the next 90 days and look at uh, filling out some of what those proposed job descriptions and some of those things might be? So. We're coming back and we're looking at all the apples in the card and, and knowing what those what those things are. Um, you know, I think there there may be a need for some of those th those new positions or modifying those positions, and I think that's I think that's great. But I would like I need I need a little bit or I want a little more explanation beyond just uh, an organizational chart of what that that looks like. Um, and so my my question really is not that I don't think this is a good idea, because I do. I think it has the potential to be a good idea, but I would like I would like to see a little bit more of the, the nuts and the bolts in the soup before I go buy the entire can of soup. Yeah, and, and, and Alderman, to, to that end, as it relates to the uh, to the information that we have available today, <coughs> so, uh, this is why we made, of course, now the the, the race, for Mr. Kent, is something that you all have brought forward. Um, but but as it relates to the other changes that, that we're that we're requesting here, we have uh, uh, we included salary grades. We can, we'll certainly make the uh, 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 we've got the, the grade and step charts ready to go. But but the reality is uh, the the new cost of this, as it relates to the reclassification, is uh, we're talking about some of the lowest paid employees in the city. So if it was 10 percent for every one of them, you're talking about less than ten thousand dollars for the four positions. Uh, as it relates to the uh, to filling a position at grade A, you're talking about a a thirty-five to thirty-eight thousand dollars in higher range, roughly. Not even that much. I mean, th these are we're, these are not these are not big expenses that that, that we are that we are requesting. H having said that, we, we will. It is our plan to uh, to come back with all of that information as we get our hands around it. Uh, we do kind of need the step. We're, we're at the the reason the, the reason we're asking for for this tonight is because we're at the limit of what we have the authority to do as staff, and we do need the board to tell us whether we can proceed forward or not because we are at the policy phase. Also, the the if there's if there's one thing that we have to have tonight, and Doug will tell you this, it, it's the new uh, 
it's the new structure in water and sewer. This is what we've talked about in the in the last two. Uh, <coughs> well, we, we in the last two executive sessions, we we talked about specifically what had to be satisfied to to get to to this quarterly report that you had to make for EPA. But as it relates to carrying out the, uh, as it relates to carrying out the uh, the AMI piece, the uh, this is separate and distinct from what we have to have, what we talked about two weeks ago. And there was a motion supporting that as you gave us the, uh, you gave us the, uh, the temporary <coughs> part or the temporary full time, uh, and then one other position that you granted us there. This is the other piece of that as it relates to dealing with uh, around water, as it relates to dealing with AMI, as it, as it relates to dealing with all of the other initiatives that Doug's group has to tackle. We truly need that organizational structure as quickly as we can get it. I mean, Doug, is that accurate? Yes, that's very accurate. And I will <coughs> say this, uh, we're a little behind on our timeline. Uh, you put on your strategic plan, you wanted this evaluation uh, complete by December 31st mm -hmm. of last year. Uh, shortly after uh, the strategic plan was adopted last year, uh, we began working on what this would look like. Uh, these guys have been working uh, for many hours over several months uh, and I feel like uh, they've gotten to a point where they know everything that they can know prior to doing this uh, and they've quite candidly <coughs> recognized uh, to you tonight that there are some things uh, that will probably change in their plan as they start doing this uh, but we're to the point where uh, all of the administrative team uh, is convinced uh, that this is the way forward uh, for the future uh, and I don't know how much more uh, prep work uh, can be done uh, prior to making the decision. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. By a vote of three in favor with two against, this measure passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Kemp, thank you for all that you do. And let me say this. <coughs> we have some guys over there at Public Services. You just received a raise. Guess what? I want you to advocate a raise for them to us. <coughs> I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Thank you. The next matter you have before you is a request for approval of the claims docket. The motion has been made by Alderman Carver to approve of the City of Starkville claims docket for all departments, including the Starkville Electric Department, as of February 27, 2015, for fiscal year ending September 30th, uh, 2015, as presented. Alderman Carver, is that your motion? Yes, with one question. <laughs> Starting at our next meeting, will that be reworded to, to name the newly named department? I mean, why is the, I understand my situation used to be start with fiber. Why is start with electric always drawn out? Ms. Harden, would you like to feel that? It's a, because we receive it as a separate claims document. Right. And, and it's just by tradition been listed because it's essentially two separate claims documents drawn together. If you remember prior to this term, you actually approved the docket separately. You had one for, for general, for, for basically everything in the city except electric and one for electric. And we've just, we combined them into one item in this term just for efficiency sake. So now that Mr. Devil's office will fall under Mr. Kemp, will it be as, as well drawn out? We'll have a utilities claims docket eventually. In, okay. the, in the short term, it will continue to be just as it is. Again, we've got to make sure that we can that we're set up to track the money and don't miss anything. But uh, but our long term plan would be to have a util would be to have a utilities division claims docket. Now it might be separated into two, one for water, uh, water one for water and sewer, one for electric. But we hope to get to the point at some you know in the future where that all flows to the clerk as a single document. Okay, thank you. Further discussion. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Oh, I didn't get a second. All right, I've got. Uh, let's see. 
had a motion. A motion was made by Alderman Carver to approve. Uh, second uh, from Alderman Maynard. Let's go all the way back to the process. Alderman Carver, you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand. By vote of four in favor with one against, this measure passes. Did I skip something? You're good now. Okay. okay. All right. So, The next matter you have before you is a request for approval of promotions in the fire department to fill vacant positions. Discussion. May I maybe recognize? You may. Just to have, as I look, we're only promoting two individuals just over the bottom right. Yes, possibly. Okay, just the um, Mr. McClain to the rank of lieutenant and Dan to the rank of sergeant. Yes. And the rest is just authorization history. Yes, possibly. Thank you. Discussion. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Walker to approve of promotions in the fire department to fill vacant positions as presented. Alderman Walker, is that your motion? Yes. Can we hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Maynard. Alderman Walker, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying that all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Uh, the next matter that you have before you is a request for approval to advertise for sealed bids to replace failing force main and gravity sewer system on Banyan Road. So moved. Motion has been made by Alderman Maynard to approve of the advertisement for sealed bids to replace a failing force main and gravity sewer system on Banyan Road. Alderman Maynard, is that your motion? Yes, sir. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Maynard, do you wish to speak on the merits? No. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Saying none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passed. Um, we'll take a brief recess, Mayor. We've got one more matter to one more executive okay. session. Uh, and that is the emergency rental of a truck. Uh, the city attorney has put red lines all over uh, the contract with big truck rental uh, that I gave him. Let me uh, give you the long and short of this. Uh, I don't think there's any way we're going to resolve all of the legal issues this evening. Uh, however, this matter is extremely urgent and pressing. Uh, Miss Gandy had one of her uh, three commercial front loaders go down today. Uh, it's going to be out for two weeks. She has another commercial front loader that is already out uh, and will be out uh, uh, for a substantial period of time. Uh, when she only has one commercial front loader, uh, she cannot fully uh, do the service of commercial garbage pickup. Uh, so it is a necessity uh, for us to uh, find a truck to rent. I have asked the city attorney uh, to craft a motion uh, that would give uh, me authority in the event uh, that uh, he, he is able to negotiate terms he is satisfied with uh, to uh, sign the agreement. Uh, if he is not able to reach such terms uh, with the company, uh, in all likelihood we're going to have to come back later this week uh, for a special call and somehow deal with this because she simply cannot uh, operate in the condition that she's in. Uh, Can we hear the motion from the city attorney? Yeah, you want to read chicken strap? Move to approve proposed rental contract with Big Truck Rental under emergency circumstances pursuant to Mississippi Code 31713K and garbage collection under 31713M22, contingent upon terms negotiated to the satisfaction of the city attorney. In the event terms cannot be negotiated to the satisfaction of the city attorney, the contract will be brought back to the board for final consideration. So move. Motion has been made by Alderman Perkins, and as it has been read and reduced to writing, I will not ask for it to be reread without objection. Seeing none, do I hear a second? second. Motion has been seconded by Alderman Wynn. Alderman Perkins, you speak on the merits. Yes, sir. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, please signify by saying nay. Measure clearly passes. Uh, that exhausts your open session business. A motion to go into executive session is now in order. Closed session is now in order. Mayor, could we take five minute recess, please? You want to take a recess before the closed session yes, call? Without objection, say none. Board will take a brief recess. <laughs> 